Hey, it's Jared. I've got some features that I want to show you in the new version of Lightroom. These features are going to be available both in Lightroom Classic and Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. So whether you're on either of those applications, you're going to be able to find these tools and you're going to find just how powerful they are for retouching. So I've got a photo of my son here at a soccer game. Uh, this particular photo during this time, all the photos that I took were on the wrong side of the sun. Essentially, the sun was on the back of their heads. So in order for me to have a properly ex exposed environment, I had to uh, have the dark face and that's just the way that it was. I made that choice at the time so that I had more of my exposure correct in the background and then I knew that I'd be able to come into Lightroom and brighten up their faces at least. But with the new version of Lightroom, this makes it so much easier. Let me show you. Uh, obviously, this is what I would have to have done in order to get a properly exposed image where there's good detail on his face at least. And I don't want the background to be that bright. This is uh, out of the camera with some adjustments, as you can see, just for style. And so what I could do is go to the masks and you'll see that it's detecting people. You can see that one person has been detected. Even though there's people in the background, it doesn't matter because those people are in the background and they're blurred out. They're not foreground subjects. So Lightroom will detect the fact that there's a foreground subject, which is just insane. So before I even go and click on create a new mask for the subject sky or background, it's already detected a person and created a mask. So I can do that just by simply clicking on that person. And you'll see that there are different aspects of this individual here that I can select. I can select the face skin, body skin, eyebrows, iris and pupil, lips and hair. And this will actually change a little bit based on how much of everything that's available. Like it says iris and pupil right now, but it will actually separate those if it has more of the eye to work with. So the AI here is just really insane. So if I like the exposure of the shirt and the legs and everything, I mean, everything else is pretty good. I just want the face to be more properly exposed. So I'll select that. It will create a mask just for the face. And then I can go ahead and brighten that up maybe with a little bit of exposure and a little bit of shadows maybe just a little bit more exposure there. I don't want to go too crazy because I don't want it to look fake or anything, but I could just add a bit more exposure there and that's looking good. Now, if I turn that mask off, you can see the difference is huge. And yes, it kind of whited that out a little bit. I could add a little bit of, I could slide the temp over just a little bit just to bring a little bit of uh, that color back into his face and match things up. And that is pretty fantastic. And if you look at the mask as I turn this on and off, like there is very, very limited spillover there. You wouldn't even notice the difference. And so as I'm clicking here, you can see that's just, I don't know, that's pretty magical that you can get that detailed of a mask just by clicking one thing and having it close enough. Uh, I, I would probably, if this was a portrait I was gonna print or blow up, I would definitely wanna go in and maybe fine tune that mask a little bit. Some things, uh, like there's a little bit of green fringing going on right here that just, it's not because of the mask, it's just because of the photo itself. And as I brighten everything on the face, it's brightening even that green fringing off there in the corner. So that's something that I might wanna work on. But let me show you as we go into another photo here, let me get down to uh, one of these photos. I think it was this photo right here. So this photo here has three kids in it and a bunch of stuff going on in the background. If I click over here, it's going to detect all three people individually. This is insane, look at that. One, two, three, and I can make selective edits to each person individually by creating individual masks. And so if you are trying to highlight a person or maybe because these each of these three kids are at different angles, so you know the kid over here on the right doesn't need as much exposure added to his face as my son here in the middle, or maybe even the kid over on the left, but being that the main subject here would be the kid in the middle because he's the one coming in to kick the ball, um, or at least that's what it looks like. Looks like both of them might be trying to kick the ball, but this is kid soccer and that happens. I could go ahead and select uh, my son here and I could select the individual items. You'll see it's a little bit less here. It doesn't mention the eyes because it doesn't really detect the eyes. The It's the side of the face and the eyes aren't totally visible. 
so it's giving us uh, different bits of information here. But I might with this one also want to select the face skin and brighten that up a little bit. Maybe increase the shadows a little bit and then slide the tint over a little just to better match that with uh, the rest of the skin tones and boom, we're ready to go. Now, this is just, <laughs> it's just so cool what you can do here with these tools. Um, what I can also do is create a whole new mask. So uh, I would just go out of this tool here, create a new mask. And so within this, I could create a mask for the background that adjusts everything that is not selected here. So I could create a background mask that would affect the entire background with the exception of this mask, uh, or I can create a whole new mask on top of it. So if I select background mask, then it's going to add a background mask there separate from this one. So I can apply masks to our original mask one, or I could apply masks to our mask two. And now I could darken the background just a little bit and that makes our subjects on the foreground pop out that much more. Now you don't wanna to go too far because then it looks like maybe you Photoshop them into the uh, background or whatnot. But I mean, just look at the, let's just zoom in and look at that mask. I mean, this mask even around the hair is pretty fantastic. So you can even see the quality of the mask that's being created by the AI tools here is just amazing. So uh, so we subtracted just a little bit of exposure off of the mask to make our subjects pop a little bit. Now let's take a look at one of the other tools. Now, before I switch on, the mask, I mean, it's endless. Play with these masks, not even just with the background and the foreground, but the sky. Um, see what you can do with different subjects. With these masks created, not only uh, can you just adjust globally, but you can also add, uh, you use the other tools on top of those as well. So you've got linear gradients and stuff like that that you can apply. You can mix these things together and really create some nice looking effects depending on what you're trying to achieve. Now, the next tool we're gonna take a look at is Content Aware Remove and how powerful that is. But before I do that, I wanna tell you about my free course. It is a Lightroom for iPad course that also translates really well to Lightroom on the Mac or the PC. But if you wanna learn my workflow for editing landscape photos on an iPad, which I take my iPad everywhere when I'm shooting because it's easy to get photos onto and quickly to edit, it's much faster than pulling out a laptop um, and dealing with all of that. The iPad is just a great tool for that. I walk through how to use all of the tools that are in Lightroom for iPad and what my workflow is for creating fantastic landscape images. That course is free to you. Use the link down in the description below. All right, so Content Aware Remove. Now I've been using the healing tool and sometimes the cloning tool I use it in almost every single image. There's usually something that I want to get rid of, but with the healing tool, a lot of times you have to select an item and then you it's sampling from somewhere else. And you can see here, the first thing it did was pull in a corner from this guy's shirt, which doesn't make any sense. I don't know why it wants to do that. But with Content Aware Remove, which is something that we've had in Photoshop and is just absolutely fantastic, I can just simply brush right over the top of that ball and boom, it's gone. And you can see even the lines here in the image are matching. And so there's no way that anybody would know that there was something there before, which is just absolutely fantastic. So let's take a look at this one over here in the background. We'll just paint over that. Boom, it's gone absolutely fantastic that we can make those selections so quick and it does such a good job which takes a lot of time especially if you're going to be editing a lot of images these new features in adobe lightroom are absolutely powerful for things like photo retouching when you are editing photos uh portraits uh, photos of a person uh, when you're editing in the sky you know that sky replacement tool was always eh, not something that i really wanted to use in the past but it's so much more powerful now and the ability to use the content aware remove tool to remove items much faster and more effectively than before these new features are just absolutely fantastic so i i hope that i was able to help you learn how to use some of these and make you aware of them fire up lightroom and give these tools a try and let me know what you think about them down in the comments section below. Make sure to get that free course from me down in the description below, and I hope to see you back in the next one. Take care.